Tony and Carmela Soprano. What can I say? Sometimes it can get pretty heated. Other times, it's not so much the words, but the facial expressions and body language, and that's what this video is about. The scenes that say so much without having to say much at all. And regarding the number, I'm doing these in chronological order. I just wanted to say that up front. Something that adds to the energy and power of these scenes is the music, most of which you won't hear on this video for copyright reasons, but certainly you can hear it all on the original show. First up, I'm in the autumn of the year. In this scene, Tony's come home after a late night out, and he tries to kind of quietly slip into bed, and he thinks Carmela's sleeping. But it's one of those things where they both just rather not deal with it. She knows that, for better or worse, she's made a deal with the devil here, and that's part of what comes with it. Next up. In this scene here, Tony comes home early while Carmela's just doing some quiet things around the house, and she asks him if he wants some cold past. And for the next minute or so, there's no dialogue, but we see what I'd like to call the routine. The silent, almost autopilot-like motions that Carmela and Tony probably reenact in one form or another more or less every day. Want uh, cheese? Something to drink? No. So. Next up. Janice decided to go back to Seattle. You're kidding. Well, what about Richie? He must be devastated. Richie's gone. Well, what do you mean, gone? Gone. Where? Holy shit. Stop asking. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All it took were a few words to make Carmela understand exactly what Tony's saying. That... That was not a marriage made in heaven. After Meadows' graduation, me and Rosalie Priel are going to Rome. You're going to have to chauffeur AJ around to his dentist and whatnot. And you've got to find a tennis clinic for Meadow to join. Because if I have to do it, Tony, I just might commit suicide. Next up. She's just lying on the couch in her robe. That Dean called today. I told him to put us down for the 50,000. Tony. You got to do something nice for me today. This is what I want. I already told him 50. Usually it's Tony taking the lead in both families. This time it's Carmela. And it's a big visual contrast from, for example, long-term parking when we see Tony and Carmela walking out to the lot where the future spec house is going to be built. Next up, Season 3, Episode 9, The Telltale Mutsadel. At this point, Jackie Jr. and Meadow are dating, and neither Carmela nor Tony were thrilled about that. But here, Carmela's telling Tony that Jackie's actually pleasantly surprised her with how nice and respectful he's been with Meadow. Meanwhile, Tony had just seen Jackie Jr. at a strip club the night before, but he doesn't say anything. 
But again, what feels the most powerful in a Sopranos kind of way is these last few moments where they both sit quietly at the table and we know there's more that's on both of their minds and a lot they could say. A lot they could say right now that they are not gonna say in Janice's words. So for now, they just do their thing. Next up, when Tony asks Carmela where her ring is, and she hesitates for a moment before saying she brought it into the jeweler to get it resized, the way it took her a couple extra seconds to respond made me think she was like most numb in a way. And perhaps this was some sort of illustration of that. She almost has to numb herself or kind of separate herself from what's going on. As we see Carmela walk back through the kitchen and over to the oven and microwave, it reminds me of the earlier scene from the season two premiere when she heated up the cold pasta for Tony. Next up, here we are at the end of season four, episode two, No Show. Carmela and Tony have just had a big fight with Meadow because she wants to go to Europe for a semester. So after all of that, they're both exhausted. Carmela just doesn't even really have the strength to argue anymore. At least not for that day. It's me she blames. Oh, fool. Next up. Something wrong, Tony? No. Why? Earlier in this episode, Mergers and Acquisitions, Carmela takes 40 grand from the bird feeder outside in the backyard. And Carmela also knows that Tony knows that she took it, or at least it appears that way. But earlier on... <sighs> so it's almost like this cold war of sorts, where they both know what the other's thinking, but instead of talking, the tension just fills the air. Oh, Please take a minute. You sure, Tony? There's not something you want to talk about? No. Like what? Next up. Waterfront property in that area. This scene here with Carmela actually reminds me of Ralph's conversation with Tony back in season three when they're discussing what to do about Jackie Jr. But more important than the particular decision is that it happened in a timely fashion. If you did better to act quickly if, you know, more is lost by indecision than by wrong decision. That's all I'm saying. Finally. In long-term parking, we're at the very end. Carmela is showing Tony the site where she plans to build her spec house. Given that this scene happens pretty shortly after Adriana was killed in the woods, it makes me think of Adriana. Not that this is the same location that she was killed in. To me, when I take this all in, I think not just of Adriana, but of the fact that the money that Tony gave Carmela to put down to buy this lot, it's blood money.
You all right? Yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Absolutely.